I'm going to speak uh, today about automated red teaming for managing the attack surface. Uh, so uh, the people that don't know me, my name is uh, Alex Peleg. I'm the CEO uh, at Synergy. I'm an ethical hacker. Uh, this is how I uh, introduce myself uh, with experience uh, in most of the security domains, uh, mostly in cloud security, application security. And I've been an application security and cloud security architect at uh, several companies. Uh, and uh, my current company, and I hope that I have the control. Uh, so, yeah, great. So my current uh, company, my current uh, uh, venture is uh, Synergy. And uh, what Synergy uh, does is uh, using uh, artificial intelligence and community uh, in order to uh, identify all the attack surface and help small and medium enterprises basically save them uh, from all their external uh, attack surface, uh, uh, which includes their own companies and their subsidiaries. And uh, we uh, do this by continuously discovering, validating and prioritizing uh, all the threats. And of course, uh, providing validation that uh, the risks are real. Uh, so you can mention that uh, very, uh, um, widely regarding the Apache Struts uh, vulnerability. So uh, it took four months to, uh, uh, from discovery or from the first uh, exploitation uh, discovery uh, until the remediation of the problem. We want to reduce this by uh, conducting something that is called uh, offensive engineering. Uh, we want to attack all the time, understand we have a vulnerability, we have a new exploit and reduce the time until this is uh, remediated uh, by providing the solutions uh, directly to the team via automation. So the uh, agenda for today is uh, to review the Kasaya bridge story, uh, to do some attack surface 101. Let's understand together why artificial intelligence is the solution for uh, the uh, attack surface. Uh, and let's understand the good, the bad, and the ugly in uh, red teaming and continuous red teaming or automating the red team uh, procedure. Uh, and I would like to share with you some open topics that are not fully solved in our domain. Uh, open source security is uh, one of them. So uh, I'm sure that uh, most of you have heard about uh, Kesaya. So uh, what uh, Kesaya is and uh, what uh, the company is doing, Kesaya is uh, in an, uh, a software company and it uh, develops software for uh, uh, MSPs uh, to control their IT devices, etc. Now, uh, Kesaya had a server uh, which was exposed uh, to the world and this uh, server had a first vulnerability, okay? The first vulnerability was authentication bypass. Now, uh, this uh, vulnerability was disclosed to Kesaya. There was a security researcher that identified the vulnerability and told Kesaya, hey guys, we have uh, identified the security vulnerability and we were able to bypass authentication just by uh, writing admin without password and we were into the server. Then we were able to bypass the uh, CSRF protection or the CSRF uh, token and uh, do an unrestricted uh, file upload. The cause of this uh, unrestricted file upload was uh, the ability to upload uh, ransom to the ransomware, sorry, uh, to the uh, servers, uh, the other servers and the hosts which were controlled by this server. As I mentioned, it, it's something that uh, allows control on other computers and uh, basically execution of this uh, ransomware uh, caused a major uh, chain uh, reaction which affected 40 clients and 1000 endpoints. And of course, uh, Kesai got a ransom note uh, of $70 million. Now this is super devastating. Uh, most likely they wouldn't pay the uh, $70 million, but uh, uh, the people that uh, know insurance knows that uh, 
after reducing the amount to $35 million, the insurance will pay only 60% of this uh, amount. It uh, keeps a bill of $15 million still for Kasai to pay, uh, and it direct uh, costs without talking about the reputation damage and other losses that uh, will come. So after this uh, horror uh, incident that I've uh, uh, just told you, I want you to understand uh, what is a tax surface. Um, and I'm, as a hacker and as an attacker, I know that I am privileged. Uh, why I'm privileged? Because I need to find only one hole in the defense. I just need one, uh, uh, one person in this uh, chain or one technology in this chain to break in order to get into the organization. And once I'm in the organization, it will take me between one hour until one week until a uh, full takeover of the organization. So uh, what is external attack surface? Uh, what is included in this external attack surface? First of all, web and mo mobile, our on-prem on infrastructure, our cloud, and everyone are moving to the cloud, our employees, our third parties, and fourth parties and our subsidiaries, the companies that we bought and uh, we have acquired. So let's understand web and mobile applications. Now web and mobile applications and uh, we are, are here as part of an AppSec group. Uh, nowadays and uh, most likely in the last uh, four or five years, they use APIs. APIs are a huge attack surface uh, and they are constantly modifying and changing. Now, there are no tools and the, start, the people that want to, to uh, build the next startups here and listen, there are no good tools that will discover automatically new APIs. Unless you're integrated to the system, there is no tool that will say, ah, this is a new API, this is a new feature, and this is how you call it. Since the, this uh, attack surface is uh, very changing and very agile, there are many problems which uh, are done in APIs and sometimes there are permissive APIs which enable upload mechanisms or other stuff or even deletion that affect drastically on uh, companies. Sensitive internal paths, uh, everyone here knows uh, uh, local file inclusion and directory traversal vulnerabilities which allow uh, hackers to get into uh, sensitive local files. My favorite is exposed administrative panels. Most of the uh, applications that we are uh, bringing to life, your WordPress application has an admin panel and all the hackers know where it's located. Now, if you don't protect this admin panel, like in the Casas uh, incident, and you have a very permissive uh, or default credentials uh, allowed, it's a great place for a hacker to begin and hack your network. Just this week, uh, we have identified two of these cases with major, like, uh, critical, uh, in, critical infrastructure uh, companies. Functions, the functions and the parameters, which are uh, also uh, uh, part of these functions, are the attack surface. How do we discover, as hackers, these uh, function parameters? We run tools. Uh, everyone here are using Burp Suite. So uh, in, the, in Burp Suite, there is a, a functionality or a plugin of uh, attack surface discovery. Uh, browsers, browsers are attack surface. Not long ago, uh, security researchers from, uh, uh, from a company, uh, I, I don't uh, really remember the, the name, uh, they found the possibility to change the language and attack the browser uh, creating a unified cross-site scripting attack on all the domains that you browse. Uh, OS, the operation system that uh, you're using is a massive attack surface and all the remote code executions that uh, you hear about are part of this uh, attack surface. So how can I get from the outside to your OS? Uh, this is a, a great uh, story. Uh, there is every program that uh, I can uh, access uh, which has a uh, Windows Server running on the background. It's something that uh, uh, is an attack surface for me. And one thing that many forget, logs. Many of our applications have login mechanisms. And there is nothing better for, for an attacker 
go directly to your logs, which are exposed to the uh, via your uh, web, and get all the tokens and all the sessions of your authenticated users. And it's part of your attack surface. And this is something that you constantly expose. From infrastructure perspective, so <coughs> exposed uh, subdomains uh, or subdomain hijacking is something that uh, we all know. And we saw these attacks happening every uh, every day or every several day. Exposed servers and services. This is uh, something that happens every day. Exposed VPN connection. This is something that no one talks about. And uh, 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 all the VPN services that you expose from your company, your checkpoint, your Palo uh, connections. Uh, if I have the credentials, I can just authenticate. The hosts, which are directly exposed to the world without any nothing, and uh, all the IoT devices. Of course, the mobile phones that uh, uh, your employees take uh, at home. One of the new attack surfaces, which is uh, very scary for us uh, as uh, security people, are the cloud. Now, so, so much data is uh, leaked uh, to the cloud. And this is a checkpoint uh, picture that uh, shows the, the attack surface or the plane of the attack surface, which uh, can be exposed. So we have the network, we have the identity, and we have the control plane <coughs> of the cloud. Uh, from identity, we know that uh, there are many uh, keys and uh, resonated into Tsuika's uh, uh, talk. Uh, there are many keys that are in open sources. People write, uh, open source and they just leave their AWS uh, keys there or their uh, Azure credentials there as part of this open source that they de develop. So there are many keys that are just there in uh, GitHub. Uh, and of course, all the buckets uh, that are exposed uh, to the world and the blobs uh, which we can identify. Now, one of the major obstacles in identify in identifying a cloud uh, attack surface is that the naming uh, of the cloud uh, instances, there is no convention. So I, as a company uh, Synergy, I can, inc uh, I can name my uh, cloud instance as uh, ABC56 uh, and no one can attribute it to me. But it also uh, creates a, a problem because someone in a sporadic attack can hack me and without me even knowing. So I need to control it by uh, other means. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, employees. Now, employees uh, are not well regarded as an attack surface, although we all know that these are target, the prime target number one. Our employees with their compromised credentials from previous attacks, with the data that uh, they leak to the outside world with the, in the same GitHub that uh, they communicate, or even some instances where they exchange pictures of internal, uh, internal uh, services uh, via uh, picture sharing uh, programs and uh, which are uh, in the internet. And the people that uh, know what I'm talking about uh, are here in the audience. And of course, we have the human mistakes or uh, the real misconfigurations or just volunteering of uh, data, uh, which uh, em our employees are doing. Uh, the third and fourth parties, uh, and we already spoke about the open source code that they are using. Uh, they, we have also integrated platforms, okay? Uh, the integrated platforms uh, which we bring into the organization and all the SaaS applications that we are using, we assume that uh, we are protected because we have some kind of a, of a mechanism. Uh, we know how to authenticate. We have established a single sign-on to these uh, applications. Uh, everything is uh, good, but at the end of the day, this is an attack surface and we don't know which of these SaaS companies is already compromised and all our details or all our clients' details are already there. So this is so super important to protect. Now, fourth parties is another story. And we always assume that the breach will come from our immediate uh, supply chain. But uh, sometimes, and the uh, SolarWinds uh, incident, 
and other uh, incidents just uh, uh, brought it to light. Sometimes you are getting the the third or the fourth or the fifth uh, chain in in a very uh, long chain of uh, hacked organizations, and this is uh, how uh, attackers work. I already have a privileged access and persistence in one organization, so why not keep going to other organizations that are using the same organization? Uh, in uh, Hebrew, there was a, a good commercial, a haver shel a havera, shel a haver shel a havera. So uh, the friend of the friend, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you're uh, the one uh, which uh, gets the uh, the problem. And subsidiaries, again, this is something that uh, the companies that we buy, okay? Um, M&As, et cetera, uh, super important. So, okay, now let's solve it. Okay, I just I scared the, you and I told you you're all exposed and there's nothing that you can do it. Um, it's not uh, true. There, there is a lot of, uh, that you can do it with it. The problem is that you don't have the scale, okay? Uh, so when I'm speaking about scale, I just provided you uh, several vectors or several ways that the hacker can get into their organization. Now you can buy uh, all the tools, so you can buy uh, dynamic scanners and you can buy tools that will protect you from open source uh, security and validate uh, that uh, you are uh, good with your runtime and everything that uh, you bring is uh, verified. Uh, but these tools over time will generate hundreds of vulnerabilities. So you don't really have the scale to deal with all the vulnerabilities which are generated because you don't know now you are overwhelmed. I have cloud vulnerabilities uh, and uh, there are great tools that uh, provide me these vulnerabilities. There are uh, application security vulnerabilities and we have a great uh, dust solution that uh, gives us the, the vulnerability. So how do I deal with uh, this uh, overload? And there is something that's called uh, alert fatigue, okay? How do I deal with it? Uh, and uh, we understand that uh, there is no one person that can deal with it. Uh, what we need is to have context. And uh, uh, AI or artificial intelligence uh, with uh, the assistance of uh, neural networks uh, or CNN uh, uh, can help us by over time understanding what we see Understanding the context of the vulnerabilities that we got, like I don't, I will not name the tool, but uh, a tool that you're running every week to check your open source uh, securities generates 200 uh, vulnerabilities. Some of them are critical in some of the packages that we can name, like uh, uh, Log4j, et cetera, and ma many other uh, NPM packages. Uh, and how how do I know what I fixed? I cannot update everything. Sorry, it's not in a production environment. You cannot update. So uh, this is why we need the context and uh, how AI can uh, un can solve this problem is by providing the additional data. Okay, this package is used in the following uh, dependencies, or this uh, server is exposed, and you. Uh, are an, you are in a retailer, you're an e-commerce company, and uh, if you have exposure of, uh, of a credential of one employee, it's not as important maybe if your website has cross-site scripting and uh, it allows uh, an attacker to deface your website. So understanding the context is one of the, the one things. So why AI again? Because of human stupidity. Now, who, uh, whoever was uh, last week in uh, the Cyber Week saw the great uh, T-shirt uh, from uh, Palo Alto Networks, and uh, there is no solution for human stupidity. Uh, and trusting uh, people, and sorry for all the people that uh, know that they are like this, but most likely uh, you don't know. Uh, so there is no solution for that, and uh, we cannot trust people uh, for not doing mistakes. Uh, this is uh, why we need uh, something else that will supervise us. Uh, will AI uh, take over the humanity? Maybe, maybe in our lifetime, maybe not. 
but uh, for now we need to start uh, trusting it. Uh, but there are many reasons why also not to trust AI because there are also many uh, uh, errors that uh, are done by using AI tools which are uh, using AI over time. So, uh, continuous red team um, is a, it's an approach, okay? Uh, and I'm missing the slide. Uh, so, uh, so I'll uh, speak about uh, continuous red team as an approach. Uh, there is a slide of the good, the bad, and uh, the, uh, the ugly of using uh, continuous red team. Uh, but uh, let's uh, talk about the, the good of uh, using uh, continuous red teaming as part of uh, our uh, activities. Um, continuous red team, the good thing is that we are able to validate the, the problems very fast. So if, I'm, if I have a, a server which is explo exploitable and the hackers can get in, then uh, I'm able to uh, raise up the alert and uh, say, this server is bad for you. Uh, please uh, sh remove it from your system, etc." Or this uh, application has a SQL injection and please remove it uh, from, uh, or fix the, the vulnerability. What is the, the bad with continuous red team? The bad with continuous red team is that uh, as any automated uh, activity that is done against uh, your system, uh, it may cause problems, okay? Uh, there is uh, a need for a human intervention in the process, which will not cause a destruction of your environment. Now, as a CISO, and I've never been a CISO, thank God, but uh, as a CISO, I would be very scared of an automated tool that starts hacking my external facing environments. Why? Because I don't know if the environment that it, it tries to hack automatically is something that will fail and break. And uh, maybe it will create a chain uh, reaction. Now, uh, the ugly part of uh, continuous red teaming, and I had a really good slide for that. So uh, uh, with, the, with the reference from the movie, but uh, the ugly uh, part is if you want to shoot, shoot, don't talk, okay? Uh, so you need to be able to uh, validate the, that you have a problem. And currently, because of the alert fatigue, uh, you are in a place that uh, you cannot avoid it. Okay, you're in a place that uh, if you don't have uh, a tool that will validate that you have vulnerabilities, uh, you, you are just falling behind your attackers. And this is something that we don't want to be uh, in a place of. And uh, there is the additional research. Now, as I mentioned, there is no perfect solution because the, the solving the external attack surface, meaning that I need to solve all the open source vulnerabilities in the world, meaning that I need to solve very fast all the web vulnerabilities in the world. I need to uh, be able to fix uh, or patch servers in, in an instance, and I need to reduce uh, my, my uh, external attack surface and posture and something Sometimes I cannot do that because of the agile and dynamic way that we are working. So what uh, we can do as a community in order to uh, enable uh, the progress in this field of uh, attack surface uh, management, uh, we need to be able to use the AI tools that I've uh, mentioned and maybe even develop new uh, uh, algorithms to create better and faster context. There is a cool project that enables automatically uh, to understand uh, or get data of, uh, of an application and understand what are the different features and, uh, and what is the context of the application. There are great projects that uh, are currently doing uh, uh, via uh, threat intelligence, understanding what are the, uh, the trends in uh, hacker motivation so 
are the hackers now using or exploiting CVE 2021-150 uh, or uh, are they using some other CVEs and maybe we need to protect the, the CVEs that they are currently being exploited first and then uh, all the others. The second uh, thing that we need to do is to prioritize uh, very fast our uh, identified vulnerabilities and there is a, a great new tool and that was introduced to the world uh, uh, is uh, OpenAI GPT-3 uh, model. It's experimental, uh, it's in beta stages. You already started seeing it working in uh, GitHub uh, by Microsoft where it com completes automatically the, or based on uh, natural language uh, processing, it uh, builds the, the code that uh, the developer should use Maybe this is the way to uh, reduce the time that uh, uh, a developer can uh, fix or patch a, a code which was built. Um, it's, a, it's a startup idea. Maybe one of you will develop a startup which is based on GPT-3, which will fix my SQL injection in PHP and boom, you have the code, okay? Uh, and this is something that is uh, very cool and integration with the CICD. Currently, I'm uh, already uh, stopping. So the, currently, the, uh, the, C, the CD, the, the deployment part, uh, is totally uh, not uh, being uh, integrated with all the external attack surface uh, uh, tools or verification tools. So there are not so many tools that uh, trigger a dust test exactly when a deployment is made. There are not many tools which will uh, do a vulnerability assessment uh, exactly when a depl deployment happens. And there are not so many tools that will check configuration, uh, configurations of our cloud exactly when a new deployment is, uh, is done. And by the way, there are not so many tools that will combine everything and will provide you the context of everything in, uh, in real time. Now we're in uh, Q&A, so please feel free to ask.